Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the solar system, which is our planetary neighborhood. Before we get started, though, I would just like to ask that if you watch this video and you enjoy it, you subscribe to the channel and like the video. It really helps me out. It makes it easier for me to make more videos like this um, and to know if you guys actually like what I'm making or not. So without further ado, let's talk about the solar system. So what exactly is the solar system? Well, if you think about the universe as like a big, uh, like a big state, maybe like a, a state in the United States, okay, a solar system is kind of like the neighborhood our planet is in. Solar systems often have stars at the center of them, like ours do, and solar systems are officially all the celestial objects that surround a star bound by gravity. So anything that's not pulled by the, our sun's gravity is not a part of our solar system. So here's kind of a nice look at what our solar system looks like. We've got the sun all the way over here on the left, and then as we move out, we've got Mercury and Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. As you notice, um, Pluto is not included in this picture. Um, Pluto is no longer designated as a planet. It turns out it's too, uh, it's too small. Um, and it also does not fit the newer criteria of what makes a planet. Um, I think we were just really excited that we found something out there that we could see. Um, and so we Im immediately named it a planet, but it really kind of fits more into the dwarf planet category that we have um, for smaller celestial bodies. So it has been revised down to a dwarf planet. But don't worry, we still love Pluto regardless. Let's talk about each one of the planets um, and kind of a few facts about them. The first planet in our solar system is Mercury, and it's the closest planet to the sun. It's also the smallest planet in our solar system. Mercury's temperature fluctuates wildly, with the temperature being as low as negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit at night and over 800 degrees Fahrenheit in the day. We have spent two spacecraft to Mercury um, to kind of see what was going on there. And this is a really high resolution image of Mercury that we've gotten from one of our super fancy telescopes. Venus is the second planet in the solar system, and it has an atmosphere of uncontrolled greenhouse gases. Due to the thick atmosphere, a storm has raged on this planet for ages, and the temperature is higher than that of Mercury, even though it's further away from the sun. Um, so as you can see here, we can't actually see the surface of the planet. This is all cloud cover um, because the atmosphere is so thick, all the heat gets trapped in Venus. So it's just continuously getting hotter and hotter, which is kind of scary if you think about it. This is potentially what the Earth could look like if we continue to let our greenhouse gas emissions rise and rise and rise. The Earth is our planet, and it's the third one in the solar system. Our planet is covered in water, and it supports life, thanks to our atmosphere and the abundant amount of water. Right, All of our, wa all of our, our life on our planet is water and carbon-based. Earth has a relatively stable temperature range and a seasonal cycle, thanks to the tilt of its axis. The Earth was formed about 4.5 billion years ago. The moon... Um, is the only moon our planet has, and it's made up of the remnants of Earth's creation and several large meteor collisions. So basically, it's just like a chunk of rock that didn't quite make it into the final, the final Earth. Uh, the moon is the largest moon relative to planet size in the solar system, so it's the biggest moon compared to the planet it orbits. Um, most moons in our solar system are very tiny compared to the planets that they, they orbit around. This one is relatively large in comparison. Because of that, the moon has had a very large impact on the development of life on Earth because it has tidal interactions. It has so much gravity that it influences the, our planet um, instead of just being kind of a one-way gravitational street. Mars is the fourth planet in the solar system, and it's the last on the inner part of the solar system. Mars has a very thin atmosphere and is home to the largest volcano in the solar system. Mars has been explored by human spacecraft by several rovers, and there are more coming in the 2020s. So we've been doing a lot of research into Mars um, and all the different parts of it. In between Mars and the next planet of our solar system is something called the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt contains thousands of smaller, irregularly shaped celestial bodies that are much smaller than planets, and this belt is most likely just leftover pieces from the creation of our solar system that never got turned into anything. So it's just basically this big belt of 
rock chunks that's in between Mars and Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, and it's the first of the gas giants. All the planets after Mars are actually um, made mostly of gas. There's not really a solid surface. The large red spot on Jupiter's surface is a hurricane that has continuously stormed for over a thousand years. Jupiter has many moons, including Titan, and that's a moon where there's liquid gasoline um, that flows on the planet instead of water, which is pretty interesting, I think. Saturn is the next planet in the solar system, and it's known for its rings. Saturn's rings are made up of tiny pieces of ice and rock, and they steadily rotate around the planet in this cool ring-like shape. Saturn wasn't actually discovered until 1610, and that's because Galileo finally saw it in his telescope. Um, so this is a planet that's far enough away that we can't see it uh, just with the naked eye. Neptune is the eighth planet from the sun, um, and it is a deep blue color. Uh, Neptune is considered eighth planet. No, it's the seventh planet. Four, five, six. I miscounted. It's the seventh planet. That's my bad. Neptune is considered an ice giant, and it's composed mostly of gases and liquids. On average, the temperature on Neptune is negative 360 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's very cold there. And Neptune's atmosphere is mostly hydrogen and helium, so some of the two most basic gases in our universe. And then finally, our last planet is Uranus. Uh, Uranus is the other ice giant and the last planet in our solar system. Like Neptune, it's composed mostly of liquids and gases like water, methane, and ammonia. And there are 27 different moons that circle Uranus. Uranus was not discovered until 1781 by William Herschel. Once again, right, we needed a more powerful telescope to see that far. There are, of course, other uh, dwarf planets out there beyond Uranus, like Pluto. Um, and this, this area, the outer reaches of the solar system, is called the Kuiper Belt. It's a ring of larger celestial bodies, and Pluto is the largest of these. And we once considered it a planet, however, we've realized it's not quite big enough. So now it is a dwarf planet. Pluto is only one-sixth the size of our moon, and only has one-third of the moon's volume, which is another part of the reason why we've downgraded it. Finally, the last part of our, um, our solar system is the Oort cloud. It's a massive spherical cloud of dust and debris that encircles our solar system. It was first theorized by Jean Oort, a Dutch astron astronomer in 1950. And although it's never actually been viewed by human eyes, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that it does exist. And so you can really think of our solar system as this really big sphere of, of dust with stuff on the inside of it. Uh, as a nod to ancient astronomers and their contributions to our understanding of the planets, the various planets have been named after Roman gods like Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Neptune, Saturn, Uranus, and Pluto. They're all Roman god names, and many of the moons also refer to Roman and Greek mythology. In the United States, NASA is our space exploration agency, and they are the people who go around and do all the science um, and exploration of um, the various planets in our solar system. NASA sends research vessels into space to collect information and data about the solar system and beyond. And these days, NASA is focused on uh, space exploration, but also a better understanding of Earth, and they're leading the effort to colonize and terraform Mars, something that we want to learn how to do so that if we ever do leave our solar system, we can find habitable places for us to live in the future. The most famous missions that NASA has undergone are the Apollo missions, and they're the ones who put humans on the moon for the first time. There have been many moon landings since the Apollo program began um, in the early 1960s, and it ended in 1972. Uh, the Apollo program cost $165 billion. NASA also cooperates with other space agencies to maintain the International Space Station. The ISS, as it's called, is operated year-round and is in orbit around the Earth. Um, by a team of astronauts from around the world. Science experiments and other tests are performed on the International Space Station. Eventually, in the future, the current ISS um, will, will eventually fall out of orbit. And when that happens, we'll have to launch and build a new one um, so that we can continue the science that's being done on the ISS. 
NASA also lands unmanned rovers on the moon and Mars, and these rovers do experiments and collect data without the risk to human life that manned spacecraft pose. So we've really moved away from um, manned launches, especially after some of the um, accidents that happened in the 70s and 80s. And so now we use these unmanned rovers to do our experiments on other planets. The current Mars rover is called Curiosity and has been on the surface of Mars since 2012. The Voyager program is another scientific program that NASA has um, has invested in, and it has sent two interstellar probes out into space. Voyager 1 and 2 were launched in 1977, and they've passed by several planets on their flight, including Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So the goal, right, was to make it so that we can get some records on these planets because they're so far away. These are still soaring through space past the boundaries of our solar system, so they're still going, which is pretty cool. Thank you guys so much for watching and learning about our solar system and how we're exploring it. Um, if you like that video, just like I said at the beginning, go ahead and like it. And if you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching uh, this science terminology video, and we'll see you soon with more in the future. Bye.